What's going on everyone? It's Ben and I want to talk to you about not sounding weak behind the drums. Now, I'm not saying that you don't want to be quiet sometimes or play dynamically, like that's awesome when it's musically appropriate, but when the music really kicks up and it gets heavy or it gets loud, you need to pick that up as a drummer, otherwise you know, it's just gonna die. And we've all been there, we've you know, been to gigs, you know, I've been watching drummers going, man, you need to just like give it some balls and play, you know, because there's definitely a way of sounding loud and powerful behind the drums without you know, hurting yourself with bad technique or like choking the drums, you know, because people are concerned about that. So look, let's just have a look at some common mistakes that people make when they're just not picking up the plane and they're not playing loud enough to suit the music. So look, let me give you a musical example so you can hear what I mean. I'll take the verse from Centered in One by Dorje and I'll play it kind of without much oomph and power and you'll hear what it sounds like. Yeah, you know, that's not really what that groove is supposed to sound like. It's, it's meant to be like, bah, gah, bah, 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 gah. and you know, you can, if you listen to that tune, you've got like some fat distorted bass going on and it's, it's a powerful groove. So if I play it with like rim shots, which I'll show you how to do, and I'm laying into the kick and I'm really laying into the hats and just kind of committing to the groove, you'll hear how much of a difference it makes in the energy of it. So much better, you know, so much more vibe when you're talking about playing with power. So some of the stuff I was doing there, like let's look at rim shots. Rim shots are massively important if you want to play a powerful groove. And that means instead of playing the snare in just the center of the drum, like this, you actually hit the drum both in the center with the tip of the stick, but also, as you can see from my totally mashed up drumstick here, uh, you actually hit the rim of the drum as well, which is why it's called a rim shot. And the way that that actually transfers the power through the stick and the sound of hitting the rim of the drum combines you to give a really fat, powerful snare tone. And I normally play rim shots on all my bat beats. It's just like a go-to thing. So that's like tip number one, is you wanna get the rim shot down. So listen to the difference. Huge difference, that's the first thing that I hear if I'm listening to a player and they're meant to be playing something heavy and the drums just sound weak. It's because they're not playing rim shots when they should be. So next up, you wanna be looking at how you're actually hitting the bass drum. It's so important if you know, you're going for a powerful section that you really give it some oomph because you know, a lot of that low end and power is coming from the sub that the bass drum is giving you. So I play heel up. And that means, as you guessed, that my heel is off the pedal board. I actually find I get a lot more power than if I play heel down. Now you can definitely get power from heel down and there's definitely times where dynamically you do want to play heel down. Uh, but let's give you an example of me playing a groove. Heel down and then I'll go heel up. And just for me, it immediately gives me more power. So it sounds like this. So you can hear right there, you've got more attack and I just think you've got more punch when I'm playing heel up. So rim shots, playing heel up and making sure you're laying into the bass drum, those are two points. The next thing is when you're playing a fill or you're playing something fast, make sure you actually keep up 
the velocity of what you're playing, like the hardness of what you're playing. Otherwise, as you get faster and you're playing something, you know, naturally you're going faster, you've got less stick height, so that means you're going to have less volume, but you've really got to try and, you know, hit as hard as you're doing in the rest of the groove, otherwise it'll kind of fall off in the fill. So let me show you what I mean. You know, I kind of, I deliberately sort of played it sort of holding back on the impact that I'm giving that fill, like a fast sort of 16th note thing. And actually even psychologically, just holding back, I fluffed that in the middle because I wasn't committing to it. So part of the approach to playing fills when you're trying to play heavier and more powerfully is that you just want to give it that commitment in your head that you're going to nail it. So let me play it again. I'll play something sort of a fast, you know, 30 second note fill, but I'll actually try and keep the uh, volume of what I'm playing up as well. Just such a different mindset, you know, when you're playing, when you're going, right, I'm gonna play this powerfully. Now you gotta be careful, because if you go in and play something powerful, and you're like, oh, this is the fill, it's gonna be immense. The problem is you can actually rush it, you know? Like it's so easy if you're playing fast and you're trying to play powerfully to rush it. So the absolute way to boss this is to put a metronome on, play those fast fills, get the power, but make sure that you're sticking on point to the click. So we've got rim shots, we've got playing heel up and giving that bass drum some real power. We've got maintaining volume on faster fills. Now, finally, you've got to play those cymbals loud as well, particularly if you're riding on a big crash. The worst thing is like, you know, band kicks in to like just an awesome heavy section, drummer goes up to the crash, you're like, go on son, and it just doesn't give it what it needs. So like, listen to this, if I'm playing a powerful groove and I lay off on the crash, just feel how it's kind of out of balance. So I'll just play two bars of groove and I'll go into a big sort of, you know, ridden on the crash section like this. No, look at that. What is going on there? There's just no, there's no oomph. It needs to be like this. You know what I'm saying? You gotta play into it. You gotta give it some. So go and put your favorite heavy tune on, try this stuff out, rim shots, giving it some more juice on the kick drum, making sure those fills are nice and powerful. And when you get up to riding on your cymbals, you know, give it some even power and make sure it all sounds nice and balanced. So I hope that helps out, gives you some things to sort of try out. You don't want to sound weak behind the kit when the band kicks it up because as the drummer, you are the backbone of the tune and you are responsible for the dynamics in the tune and the power and the energy and making people move. So you've got to, even if you're feeling tired on the day, you know, you just got to give it some, otherwise the tune is just going to flop. So I hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll speak to you soon.